But on runway 26 right, something had changed since the last takeoff. At 1414, exactly 28 minutes before the Concorde's departure, a McDonnell Douglas DC-10 from Continental Airlines had departed bound for Newark. During taxiing to the runway, a small metal piece 43 centimeters long had detached from the DC-10's thrust reverser and fallen onto the runway. The titanium alloy metal strip weighed only 29 grams, approximately the thickness of a sheet of paper. For any other commercial aircraft, this small piece would have been completely insignificant, possibly causing only minor noise when passing over it. But for the Concorde, with its high-pressure tires and unique fuel tank design, this fragment would become the trigger for a tragedy that would change aviation history. At 1440, Charles de Gaulle Control Tower transmitted the authorization that would seal the flight's fate. Air France 4590, runway 26 right, cleared for takeoff. The controller's voice was routine, professional. It was the 15th Concorde departure of the day from Charles de Gaulle. No one could imagine it would be the last. The Concorde, loaded with 185 tons total weight near its maximum limit, began its takeoff run. To reach the necessary speed of 400 kilometers per hour over a distance of 3,400 meters, the four Rolls-Royce Olympus engines roared with a combined power of 68,000 kilos of thrust, a sound so distinctive that residents near the airport could identify a Concorde takeoff with their eyes closed. At 1442 and 31 seconds, when the Concorde had reached a speed of 278 kilometers per hour, the right front tire of the main landing gear passed directly over the metal strip left by the Continental DC-10. The impact instantly cut the tire, sending a 4.5 kilogram rubber fragment at 140 meters per second toward the Concorde's right wing. The tire fragment did not directly pierce fuel tank number five. Instead, the massive impact created what engineers call a hydrodynamic shockwave that traversed the tank like an invisible tsunami. The force was so intense, it caused a rupture more than one meter long in the tank's upper section. Within seconds, aviation fuel began spilling at a rate of 20 liters per second. With more than 90 tons of highly flammable fuel aboard, the leak represented a mortal danger. But there was no fire yet. For agonizing 20 seconds, the Concorde continued accelerating down the runway while a stream of fuel extended behind the right wing like a deadly liquid wake. At 1442 and 54 seconds, a spark, probably generated by the retracting landing gear or the engine's hot exhaust, ignited the massive fuel leak. A 60-meter flame instantly extended behind the Concorde's right wing, creating an image 